base machine setup. Carefully unpack and inspect the crates and boxes containing the crossbow machine and auxiliary equipment. Be sure to wear gloves and safety glasses. When opening the longer rail crate, bend open the metal tabs to remove the top of the crate. When opening the smaller central unit crate, bend open the bottom tabs in order to lift off the entire box from the base. The crossbow can be used as a portable machine or mounted to a table in a more permanent installation. If using the crossbow as a portable machine, the stabilizer feet should be mounted to the rail track. With the help of a second person, grasp the rail track assembly at each end and carefully turn it over and lay it on its back, avoiding damage to the drive rack. Set the track on pieces of wood to protect the drive rack from damage. Locate the captive T-slot nuts in the frame and move them to the desired locations. Attach the stabilizer feet to the bottom of the rail track assembly using the supplied M8 screws. Leave the screws loose until the three feet are attached and arranged in the desired location, then tighten. With the help of a second person, Turn the rail track upright and set it on a stable, level surface where the end of the rail track is easily accessible. If mounting the crossbow to a cutting table, the stabilizer feet are not needed. With the help of a second person, grasp the rail track assembly at each end and carefully set it on the table mounting brackets. Position the rail track on the table mounting brackets so that there is equal rail extending to the front and rear of the table. Carefully tip the rail track on its side and locate the captive T-slot nuts in the frame. Then move them to the desired location. There will be extra unused T-slot nuts when mounting to a cutting table. Gently lay the rail track down on the table mounting brackets. Using a mirror or a smartphone with a camera, Position the T-slot nuts precisely over the slot in the table mounting bracket. Then install the M8 screw with washer to secure the rail track to the table mounting bracket. Do not tighten the screws at this time. Once all of the screws have been installed, check the straightness of the rail relative to the table to ensure they are parallel. Once the final position of the rail is checked, go ahead and tighten the M8 mounting screws. One person must carefully lift and hold the central unit near the end of the rail. A second person should carefully guide the bearing blocks onto the guide rail. Hold level, then guide the second set of bearing blocks onto the end of the guide rail. Slowly push the machine completely onto the rail track until the drive pinion has engaged with the drive rack. The machine is supplied with two rubber bumpers and a pair of M6 by 40 mm socket head cap screws. Install one of these in the last bolt hole at each end of the rail to prevent the central unit from sliding off the end of the rail track. Remove the existing M6 screw from the hole and insert the new one through the rubber bumper and into the anchor that is in the T-slot. Do not over tighten the screws. They will bottom out in the extrusion before they crush the rubber bumper. Orient the drive rack mounted on the crossbeam so that it matches the notch in the central unit. Carefully insert the crossbeam into the central unit, pushing lightly as it fits between the V-wheels. Continue to slowly push the crossbeam through the central unit as it fits through the second set of V-wheels and then engages with the drive pinion. If the machine will be using a plasma torch, Install one of the two cable holders at the left-hand end of the crossbeam. If the machine will only be used for oxyfuel cutting, this cable holder is not necessary. Slide post clamp over end of the beam and tighten screw to secure in place. This cable holder must be installed after the crossbeam is inserted into the central unit, but before any hoses or cables are connected to the crossbeam. Only screw the cable clamps onto the cable holder post until the top of the post is flush with the inside of the cable clamp. 
This will allow it to turn freely. After the plasma torch lead is installed, it will prevent the cable clamp from coming unscrewed from the post. Insert the supplied M8 screw through the back of the torch lifter and into the torch holder, then tighten. Make sure the torch holder is level, perpendicular to the torch lifter. Insert the supplied M8 screw through the hole in the mounting tang on the end of the crossbeam, through the joint spacer, and into the threaded hole on the torch lifter mounting lug. Adjust the torch lifter until it is vertical and then tighten the screw. Connect the two-pin lift motor cable connector between the torch lifter and the crossbeam. If the machine will be used with both oxyfuel and plasma torches, the secondary torch holder should be installed. Insert the supplied M8 screw through the hole in the mounting tang on the back side of the crossbeam and into the threaded hole on the torch holder. Adjust the torch holder until it is horizontal and then tighten the screw. The lift motor and solenoid valve cable is a four-wire cable with four-pin connectors at each end. It connects between the back of the central unit and the end of the crossbeam. Connect one end to the four-pin socket on the connector panel on rear of central unit. Connect the other end to the four-pin socket at the end of the crossbeam. This connector has a spring-loaded retaining collar. Simply push in to install until the collar clicks into place. To disconnect the cable, pull on the collar. The input power cable is a standard 50-foot cable with a standard Edison connector on one end and a standard IEC power connection at the other end. Make sure the power switch is in the off position before plugging in the power cable. Plug the IEC connector to the power cable socket in the connector panel on the rear of the central unit. Plug the other end to a standard 110 volt AC outlet. Assemble torch, needle valves, check valves, and torch hoses. Assemble the needle valves to the inlet fittings on the top of the torch as shown. Assemble check valves to the needle valves. Use the supplied torch adapter to install the oxyfuel torch into the torch holder. Arrange the torch so that the needle valves are easily accessible. Tighten the torch holder as necessary to hold the torch firmly in place. Connect the three torch hoses to the gas pipe fittings. Connect the fuel gas hose first because the preheat oxygen hose will subsequently block access to that fitting. Connect the preheat oxygen hose next. Finally, connect the cutting oxygen hose. Be sure to connect preheat oxygen and cutting oxygen hoses to the correct fittings. The cutting oxygen hose is the center hose on the oxyfuel torch. It connects to the outlet of the solenoid valve. Temporarily disconnect the lift motor and solenoid valve cable from the end of the crossbeam to avoid damaging it while tightening the hose connections. Attach the oxygen and fuel gas supply hoses to the inlet fittings on the crossbeam. The fuel gas hose connection is reversed threaded to prevent improper connection. Be sure to use two wrenches to tighten the hose connections to avoid moving or damaging the gas pipes through the crossbeam. Be sure to not allow the hose adapter fitting to rotate in the end cap because this connection uses a compression ring to seal the gas pipe and should not be disturbed. Attach the other end of the gas supply hoses directly to the gas regulators if using cylinders or to the regulated outlet of a gas pipeline system. Plasma Torch Installation Screw the cable holder post into the pre-installed post clamp on the right-hand end of the crossbeam. Hand tighten. Have the torch fully assembled before inserting it into the torch holder to prevent damage to the threads on the torch body. Assemble the PT37 plasma torch with one of the shields with the IHS lug. Insert the torch into the torch holder, rotating as necessary so the IHS lug fits through the torch holder. Tighten the torch holder onto the metal barrel of the torch handle 
just above the black plastic torch body. Do not over tighten the clamp. Insert the six pin plug into the mating socket on the connector panel on the rear of the central unit. Connect the 14 pin plug into the matching socket at the ESOP plasma power source. Insert the two pin plug into the mating socket on the connector panel on the rear of the central unit. Connect the red wire to the IHS lug on the PT37 shield. Connect the black wire to the work ground. If using the crossbow in a portable application, the black wire should be connected to a clamp that can be attached directly to the metal plate that is being cut. Initial power-up testing. First power-up sequence. 1. Set the drive engage disengage switch to the off position. 2. Make sure the e-stop button is not pressed. Turn clockwise to ensure it is released. 3. Turn on the main power switch on the rear of central unit. 4. If the CNC boots properly, switch the drive engage disengage switch to the on position. Test main functions of the machine. 1. From the main menu, select F2 for manual mode. Press the S up, page up, and S down, page down keys to test the raise and lower function of the torch lifter. 3. Press the four jog arrow keys to test the machine motion in all four directions. For machines equipped with an oxy fuel torch, 4. In the setup mode, control parameters, Set the plasma oxy fuel setting to zero for oxy fuel. Press F7 to save changes. Press the escape key, then F2 to return to the manual mode. 5. Press the cut oxy and off keys to test the function of the cutting oxygen solenoid valve. For systems equipped with plasma, 6. In the setup mode, control parameters, Set the plasma oxy fuel setting to 1 for plasma. Press F7 to save changes. Press the escape key, then F2 to return to the manual mode. 7. Move the torch over a piece of metal that is not well supported and will give way if pressed down. 8. With the plasma power source still off, press the pierce key to test the initial height sensing function of the automatic height control. The torch should drive down, touch the plate, and then retract to piercing height. After doing so, press the off key to cancel the plasma start cycle. 9. Now switch the power on to the plasma power source and preset the cutting current to the appropriate setting for the nozzle installed in the torch. 10. Press the Pierce key to initiate a plasma start cycle. After setting initial height, the plasma torch should fire and pierce through the material. Press the Off key to cancel the plasma start cycle. Switching between metric and inch. The machine is set to metric mode when delivered. If inch mode is desired, follow this procedure. 1. From the main menu, Press F4 to select Setup. See Section 4.25 for detailed information on the Setup mode. 2. In the Setup menu, press the F1 key to enter the Speed Parameter page. 3. Change the speed parameters to appropriate values for the inch measurement system. 4. Press F7 to save the changes to the speed parameters. 5. Press F5 to enter the control parameter page. 6. Change the metric inch parameter to 1 for inch mode and 0 for metric mode. 7. Press F7 to save the changes to the control parameters. Setup mode. It is recommended that all parameter settings be carefully checked before cutting with the crossbow. From the main menu, Press F4 to select Setup. 
refer to Appendix 6 in the Crossbow Instruction Manual for suggested starting values for all parameter settings. Step through the settings in each section to make sure they are set correctly, then press F7 to save any changes before moving to the next section.